Hey y'all, Dennis here, Muddy Water Search and Recovery, and I want to do a recap on the Alex Van Dalsen case. Um, this case we did a mini series on, and please go back if you haven't seen it and check out the mini series on this. We went over all the police reports, we went over the autopsy reports, we went over uh, all the information, and we also done a reenactment video on this, and this is another one of those cases that was ruled a suicide, yet not one thing we were able to find points to suicide. In fact, the firearm that was found on scene I personally don't believe was even the firearm that was used in this crime the size of the entrance and exit wound is not consistent with that round period um, a 9 millimeter was found and actually it was an SCCY CPX 2 9 millimeter black with pink camo pattern on it Three or 3.1 inch barrel, 15 ounces. The size of the projectile from the 9 millimeter is considerably smaller than either the entrance or exit wound that was found in this case. In fact, a 45 round is consistent with the sizes. So there is a lot of questions that come up in this case. Um, Alex was a 21-year-old from Lafayette, Indiana. Um, Alex was transgender. He was 5 foot tall, 85 to 90 pounds. Stopping right there a minute, 85 to 90 pounds. Um, his mom reported to us he had bad wrists, really weak. He had to wear wrist braces. His wrists were so weak that he couldn't, he had trouble and really couldn't even squeeze the clutch on a four wheeler. So, or a motorcycle is one of those, but either way, he couldn't even do that. So, the entrance was reported to have been the right temple, the exit was the left temple, yet the entrance wound, according to them, was significantly larger than what they called the exit wound. Speaking with firearm experts, that is typically not the case. For a solid core projectile or a full metal jacket, which it basically it's obvious that's what was used, even coming from firearms experts, because there was no fragmentation found during the autopsy. Fragmentation is going to come from your soft cores, your hollow points, self-defense. That is where the projectile itself mushrooms down and it ends up pieces coming off, breaking apart, and fragmenting. There was none of that in the autopsy report. In fact, it specifically said no fragments. So this would have been a solid core projectile. It would have mushroomed a little bit, but... The entrance and exit wounds would have been very close to the same size with the exit being slightly larger. So there was many questions in this case that did not add up to the official autopsy report and to what these officers put in their incident reports. And we feel that the only way this case is going to get reopened, and I hesitate to say the only way, but what's going to help get this case reopened is to get as much public attention on this case as possible. And this is very similar to what's going on in Tennessee right now. The best thing any of us can do is get these stories out to the public Get eyes on this, get the attention, and eventually there will be so much attention on these cases, they will have no choice but to reopen them. That is the overall goal here. 
Um, Alex was actually seen leaving his home on foot around 11.45 p.m. on February 3rd, 2021. His body was found and recovered on February 9th of 2021. Volunteers had searched a five-mile radius of where he was last seen. A search dog was brought in less than 48 hours and was able to track Alex down the road. I believe it was 0.3 of a mile and lost his scent, which tells us that Alex was picked up in a vehicle. The closest house right there reported that their alarm system was triggered that night around this time frame which tells me most likely somebody may have turned around in their driveway. There was over, there was a foot of snow on the ground. It was less than 20 degrees. Alex had asthma where he depended on an inhaler even while walking on a nice day. Law enforcement have in their reports that Alex walked 10 miles to the location where he was found in a foot of snow, less than 20 degrees, double layered in clothing, and did not have his inhaler with him. He would not have been able to have made that walk. A person who, a person who was plowing the snow, and this was at the... Crosser Sports Complex, that is where Alex was found. A plow driver was plowing the area when he said he saw an indention in the snow. So upon further looking, he saw what appeared to be a pair of boots sticking out of the snow. He walked over to it and found Alex and notified law enforcement. One of the issues I personally have with that is the snow plow driver... He drove down the road through the parking area and didn't plow anything. And yet, he's down there plowing a walking trail. And through that is where he found Alex. Why did you not plow the road in the parking area and then go into the trail instead of driving down through there and then going in to plow the trail? But but he's the one who did find Alex and Alex was deceased, covered in a layer of snow with what appeared to be a gunshot wound. He immediately notified law enforcement. And I also have found it was, it was reported that it was 21 degrees Fahrenheit, but felt like it was 4 degrees with wind blowing 25 miles per hour from the east. And this is from Deputy Kiefer from the Tippecano County Sheriff's Office. And I'm hoping I got that county right. But that was actually in his report, 21 degrees, felt like it was 4 degrees, 25 mile per hour winds from the east. Nothing, I'll put it this way. They did not check for gunpowder residue on Alex's hands. It is in the incident reports from the very beginning from his missing persons report that law enforcement were already looking at this being mostly suicide. Now, Alex did at one point have some emotional, some mental issues, went through some depression, had thoughts of suicide, and Alex went and sought professional help to help him get through this. At the time of his disappearance and his death, it seemed things were going good for Alex. He had a girlfriend. Um, I have I haven't spoken with her, but we have messaged. She has had nothing but 
wonderful things to say about Alex. His mom, I have spoken with her, has had nothing but wonderful things to say about Alex. Many of his friends have reached out to me, and they have had nothing but wonderful things to say about Alex. Alex was well-loved. If I went into his social media and was looking at posts and pictures that Alex had put in up to this date, and he seemed happy. Now, I know a lot of people will hide depression and anxiety under the false happiness, but this, it seemed genuine. Um, and taking that in with everything that's in these reports, everything that we were able to uncover, and please go back and watch that mini series because we cover a lot of information during that during that series, excuse me. And please help us share this case, get as much attention on this case as well as the Tennessee cases. So hopefully we can get these cases reopened and the families can get answers. There could be justice for the lost loved ones. When you look at Tennessee, some of those cases, the individuals have yet to be found. Alex's case, Aaron Key's case, you know, these individuals were found, but to rule them as suicide when there's not one piece of evidence that points to suicide is beyond disturbing. And reading through incident reports to where, you know, I've read the incident reports, I've read emails and messages that were sent back and forth. I've read the autopsy report. As many of you know, Dan, who is one of the viewers on here, he has worked on this case as well. He and I have shared a lot of information back and forth on this and worked this kind of together. It's, it's mind-blowing that people could think that us civilians can be so blind as to blindly believe that this is going to be suicide when nothing points that way. Now, talking with Alex's mother, I can tell you 100%, I am 100% confident, this is not just a grieving mother who doesn't want to accept that her son committed suicide. This is not the case here. She is... She would rather be able to say, hey, yes, my son did this and not have to deal with the pain and the frustrations that she's been going through because she knows this was not suicide. And I am 100% convinced this was not a suicide. Please help us share this case. I will put, I will put a... Post, or a, yeah, I will post a flyer that we will put together for this case, as well as the Tennessee cases. Please help share those flyers. Please help share the videos that's covering these cases so we get that public attention on these. You know, Alex deserves justice. You know, these folks in Tennessee, they deserve justice. I'm sure there are more cases out there that follow these same lines who deserve justice. Let's all work together, get as much attention as we can on these cases. Hopefully, that could help lead to these cases being reopened and investigated properly. Please be sending your thoughts and prayers out to these families. They have gone through so much. They continue to go through this every single day. And we will continue doing everything we can to help these families find answers. Until next time, you guys stay safe.